Well lads, what's the crack and welcome back to another new video on KTFG and we had again, this is that time of the week again, it is time for my Premier League predictions this time for match week 3 and well after a very entertaining match week 2 we are now ready for another match week and a crazy match week of Barclays Premier League so I'm pretty sure you're all raring to go before we do though make sure you are subscribed to the channel 95% of you are not subscribed to the channel so if you are a new viewer make sure you do subscribe it's free like so I would highly advise it if you do like the content and make sure you like the video as well it really does help and support the channel and make sure you click the bell so you're notified when I do upload a new video so enjoy today's Premier League prediction first game then is Tottenham Hotspurs as they'll be hosting Wolves a very interesting matchup here and um, Tottenham of course drew 2-2 away at Chelsea last week and a very entertaining match there Wolves on the other side in a less entertaining match drawing 0-0 at home to Fulham so yeah both these sides drawn last week it'll be interesting to see here uh, who can get the win Mateus Nunes of course could make his debut in this game of course I talked about him yesterday a very good signing there let's see then if he can make a good impression if he does play in this game but really here, do you expect Tottenham to lose this game? No, I think Wolves aren't really doing that good at the moment. So, I can see Tottenham getting the win here. I'm going to go with a 2-1 win for Conte's side. I'm going to say they'll be leading 2-0 at the break. Dejan Kulusevski will score the first goal before then. Hungman Son, who hasn't scored yet in the season, he's going to get this, his first goal of the season to double that lead. And well, Tottenham then in the second half, They'll sort of just sit back, they'll play a good match, they'll still be playing very good definitely with a few half chances here and there. But I can expect Wolves to get a goal back, I can see it by Pedro Nado, a player who's rarely uh, got, uh, got um, up, and go up and going for Wolves uh, in his career. Well I think he's going to score one here, he'll get one back for Wolves but it will not be enough and Tottenham will get the win here. So yes, I'm saying Tottenham will win 2-1 with Antonio Conte watching from the stands. Now we go on to Crystal Palace versus Aston Villa. Interesting match here. Palace haven't won yet. Aston Villa though did win, although it was a very uh, it was a very dodgy win there definitely. Both these sides at the moment are sort of on the same level in my opinion, despite Villa having a win and Palace not having a win. But Palace were very good in that one one draw that I got against Liverpool there. Villa, of course, their last game was a two one win over Everton. I'm gonna say here at Selhurst Park, uh, both sides will play pretty well, but it's gonna be a one one draw. I can see finishing in this match. Both the goals, I think, will come in the first half. I can see Palace then taking the lead. Wilfred Zaha, uh, he was very good against Liverpool. He'll get an assist in this one for Odson Edward to score his first goal of the season. Before then, I can see right before the break, Danny Ings, a player who played very good against Everton as well, he'll set up Ollie Watkins to get another goal for himself and he will equalise. Then in the second half, though, not much will happen and that will be the game over. So both sides will play well here at Selhurst Park. They'll both be pretty equal in the game and well, I think a point the pace will be the fair result. So I'm saying Palace and Villa, Patrick Vieira and Steven Gerrard both getting a 1-1 draw. Now we go on to Everton versus Nottingham Forest. Very interesting match here. Nottingham Forest, first win back in the Premier League with them. A 1-0 win at home to West Ham. That was massive there for them. Of course, Everton lost 2-1 last week. Still yet to win Everton. Uh, at, at the moment, they haven't really looked all that good, Everton. And still, like, I mean, there's rumours Dali Ali going to be shit toss. There's a big loss there, but not really a big loss because uh, Dali Ali never plays really. But still, like, they're losing players definitely. And well, I'm just still not too convinced if they can gel together. Whereas Forrest have made 15 signings so far. And yet, I can still see them more signings to come, definitely. They've got a very good team. So I'm going to back the newcomers back in the Premier League to get the win here. I'm going to say Forrest win 2 0 here away at Goodison Park. I'm going to say it'll be a 1-0 lead at the break. Emmanuel Dennis on his debut for Forrest. Of course, he scored a lot for Watford last season. I can see him scoring uh, the first goal of this match on his debut. And well, that'll give Steve Cooper's team a lead. And then the second half, really, Forrest will once again dominate. And I can see Jesse Lingard getting his first goal in the Nottingham Forest jersey. And that will double the lead, ending a pretty bad uh, afternoon for Everton fans. It'll be a brilliant match for Nottingham Forest. They're going to play a very good. Steve Cooper will get his tactics right and Everton will just let themselves get bullied by this Forest team. They're really not going to play well here and well, I tell you what, Forest will be on the right path definitely. So, I can see Forest getting the 2 0 win here away at Goodison. Next match then is Fulham v Brentford. Interesting match here, of course. Fulham got the 0 0 draw last week, but Brentford 4 0 winners over Manchester United. I mean, fair play to them, fair bloody play. They played very good in that match, 
and they looked like a real team there. One player I want to mention here who has played very good in his first two matches, even against Leicester as well in the opening match, Josh De Silva from midfield. Two goals in two games. He's looked very good there. And that's very promising signs for Brentford as they look like they've got a good midfielder in their hands. We'll also be seeing the debut of Mikel Damsgaard in this match too. So, I mean, Brentford are looking scary here. But Fulham, I think there's going to be a bit of motivation there for Fulham to try to get their first win here. But will they get the first win? It's at Craven Cottage, so they've got the home advantage. But I'm going to say they'll get their third draw in a row in the Premier League. I can see another draw here, 1-1. One, one. I'm going to say I'm going to say uh, Brentford will have the lead at half time. Josh De Silva assisting Ivan Tony. He was very unlucky not to score last week and he will open the scoring then for Brentford. Then the second half, Brentford will be the better team throughout the game, I think. But I can see Alexander Mitrovic then scoring an equalizer and saving the Cottagers a point in this match. So yeah, I think Fulham will still be decent but Brentford will definitely be the dominant side. Just unlucky not to get all three points here. So I'm going to say a point to pace then between Fulham and, and Brentford. Now we go on then to Leicester versus Southampton. Interesting match here. Originally, I was going to lean towards saying Leicester would get the win here. But then I remembered the sole cost for Schmeichel. And well, they've got Danny Wardenets. They even signed a goalkeeper. But that's even that's just Daniel Iverson, who I've never heard of before. And it looks like he's going to be playing for the under-23. So it looks like they're stuck with Danny Ward here. And that's not good signs because the Welshman isn't really a good goalkeeper. So you know what? I've gone with a 2-2 draw here. I'm going to say Leicester will slip up again. And they'll, they'll uh, bottle two points in this match, really. I'm going to say it'll be 1-1 one, one at the break. I'm going to say Jamie Vardy with them will open the scoring. He hasn't really got uh, hit the ground running yet this season, but I can see him scoring a goal here before James Ward-Price scoring another goal. I'm going to say he'll score from the spot this time and he will equalise for the Saints. Then early on in the second half, James Ward-Price will get an assist, this time assisting Adam Armstrong, who I think will actually look pretty decent last week against Leeds when they drew 2-2 there. I think he will definitely score in this match and he will get the Saints ahead. And then I'm going to say James Madison will score a beautiful free kick and he will rescue Leicester a point in this match. So yeah, it's going to be a disappointing match definitely for Leicester. And it's going to be disappointing that Southampton couldn't hang on to their lead as well. I think Southampton will look like the better team as well in this match. So I'm going to say 2-2 between the Foxes and the Saints. And well, I tell you what, it'll be a match where Leicester City look like they could be in real danger for this season. Now we go on then to Bournemouth versus Arsenal. Interesting match here. Fair play to Bournemouth. Only limiting four goals to Man City. I mean, that's a pretty much a miracle in my opinion. I thought City would at least be scoring five plus goals. But no, 4 0. I think that's a respectable scoreline there. And well, they limited Haaland too, because Haaland was invisible despite getting an assist in that match. So, fair play to Bournemouth there. But this Arsenal team is just dangerous. I mean, last week, won winning 4 2 against um, Leicester City. Gabriel has lost two goals and two assists. He is looking really good. He's really looking the shape in this season. And well, it's going to be another game where Arsenal just run riot and they'll get a big win here. I'm going to say Arsenal win 3-1 over the Cherries here. Gabriel Jesus, once again, I can see him getting a brace. And well, I do think he'll only get one goal in the first half. The other goal going to be Kai Osaka, and Arsenal will have a 2-0 lead at the break. Then the second half, Marcus Tavernier. I think he's been decent so far for the Cherries. He'll get one back, the new signing from Middlesbrough. Before then, Gabriel Jesus will score a second then at some point with about 15 minutes left. And that will get Arsenal all three points here. 3-1 win here for Arsenal. I'm going to say Bournemouth once again will have a few moments in the game where they'll look decent enough. But overall, I think Arteta's side is just going to run right here. And they're going to look very good again. Looking like one of the best teams in the league again this week. So Arsenal here, I'm going to say they get a 3-1 win away at the South Coast against Bournemouth. Now we go on to Leeds United versus Chelsea. Interesting match here. Chelsea played very good against Tottenham despite only getting a draw on that one. Leeds on the other side too. Uh, only got a draw against Southampton. They'll be disappointed there definitely. And well, one player who did look very good was Rodrigo. He's had a very good start to the season. Scoring three of the four goals for Leeds here. But I tell you what, Leeds haven't beaten Chelsea since Chelsea returned to the Premier League. So I can't see them winning this game. I can't see them scoring here either. I'm going to say Chelsea just get an easy 2-0 win here. Kai Harris actually quite quite threatening uh, against Tottenham I'd say that I think he's going to get a goal here in the, at the start of the second half it'll be nil nil at the break I, I think and well I can see Havertz getting the first goal in the second half then I'm going to say that the second one will come from Mark Cucurella interestingly enough 
Cucurella has also started off well with Chelsea. So I'm going to say here that he will go on a rampage. I think he'll get an assist for Havertz and he'll get a goal for himself as well. Man of the match performance for Mark Cucurella. Watch out for him. He's going to have an immaculate game at Allen's Road. And well, Chelsea will get an easy win here. So a 2-0 win then for the Blues against Leeds. And now we go on to West Ham as they will be hosting Brighton. And well, West Ham, I mean, this has been an awful start to the season. Haven't even scored a goal yet. And well, they're coming up against a Brighton side in good form who are unbeaten so far this season. And well, West Ham have not beat Brighton in the Premier League whatsoever. Since Brighton first got promoted to the Premier League, West Ham have beat them zero times. Only ever beaten them in the Championship. That is a scary stat in my opinion. And well, with West Ham not starting off the season well and Brighton are starting off the season well, I think this is only going one way. I'm going to say the Seagulls here get a shock 1-0 win. A smash and grab 1-0 win here away at the London Stadium, away in West London. It's going to be a game where the Seagulls will dominate. I can see the goal coming in the second half through new German striker Dennis Undav. I think he's going to have a very good career at Brighton. And well, it's going to be his first goal then for the Seagulls. So I'm going to say Undav will score the only goal here. West Ham will really be poor and well, questions will start to be asked about David Moyes and whether he can um, deliver the goods then for West Ham. Let's also not forget they're playing in the Conference League uh, tonight and Thursday night. Of course, it's only against some random Danish team, I think, called Viborg. But, you know, who knows? They could still be trying to get into the Conference League here. They could still be going with a full-strength team. Who knows how David Moyes will line out. And, well, I think there might be a bit of fatigueness and jet lag here in this match. So, I'm going to say Brighton get a shock 1-0 win here against West Ham. Keeping West Ham from ever beating Brighton in the Premier League. And now we go on to Newcastle United versus Manchester City. Interesting match here. Newcastle unbeaten a 2-0 winning against uh, Nottingham Forest before a 0-0 draw against Brighton. Man City on the other side, 4-0 win against Bournemouth. Good stuff there, but they need to get Haaland more involved in that match. I think he got us ran on right in that match and score a half-trick, but he, of course he didn't even score one. Only the one assist for Haaland, definitely there. I'm sure loads of FPL players will be mad that they triple captain Haaland and he didn't do anything against the Cherries here. But I think here against Newcastle, I mean, look at Newcastle have only beat Man City once since 2010, like so. It's really not looking good for them, in my opinion. I think they'll still be decent at times here, but overall, Man City are just going to dominate. I'm going to say Pep Guardiola's team went 2-0 here. I think Haaland will be back among the goals today, and then Mares will double the lead before half time. Second half then, City will just play their boring pass and take the tackle play. They'll get about 70% possession in this match, and well, they're going to have an easy three points then away at St. James's Park. So, Man City then, easy win here, 2-0. Newcastle look decent at times, but overall, Man City will easily win this match, 2-0. And finally then, going on to the Monday night fixture, it is Manchester United versus Liverpool. And I am dreading this match. I am dreading this match. Even though Liverpool have drew their, drew their first two matches against Fulham and Crystal Palace, I mean, I'm still dreading it. Like, I know they've got a few injuries and Nunes is now suspended for that headbutt. I mean, really, I'm still nervous. Will it be another 5-0? I'm not too sure. Rumours are also that Harry Maguire will be dropped for this match, which is good news. That could prevent it from being even more embarrassing than it could be. So I'm not too sure, really. All I, all I know is Liverpool are going to destroy us. It's not going to be another good match. Like I'm going to say here, Liverpool will come to Old Trafford looking for 5-0, 2.0, but they won't get that, but they'll get a 4-0 win here away at Old Trafford. I am not confident that Ten Hag can deliver the goods here like a pre-season when we beat them 4-0 there. But now here, it's just going to be awful. Mohamed Salah, he's going to be the main man in this match. He's going to score a brace here, in my opinion. Two goals for him. Luis Diaz then will score right before half time, And it'll be a 3-0 lead for the Skizers at the break. In the second half then, uh, they'll just play the game. They'll just dominate, really. Not giving United a sniff of a chance of getting back into it. And then I'm going to say there's about 20 minutes left. Young Fabio Carvalho, who has impressed so far, in my opinion, uh, after joining from Fulham, he is going to get his first goal here at Old Trafford, and it'll be a 4-0 win for Liverpool. So, yeah, it's really going to be an ugly game for Manchester United. Of course, the stadium mightn't even be at full capacity. There could only be about 20, 30,000 United fans there because of the big protest happening. But, yeah, anyway, I mean, it's just not going to be good, isn't it? And, well, Liverpool are going to win here. 4-0 against Manchester United. But please, United, please do something here. 
because you do not want to be embarrassed by these geysers again. And that will end this Premier League prediction video, everybody. I hope you did enjoy it. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on notifications. Thank you all for the support on the channel once again. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you all once again in KTFG very, very 